Another nice thing that they've added in is the ability to relink clips on the timeline. Now here I've got a situation where I've lost some clips. They've been moved or renamed or something. So normally I'd have to go find them in the bin, right click and then say relink or link media. Now I can come down to the timeline and just right click directly on the clip and choose link media, find the clip wherever it is and then link up to it. Now you might also, if you've been used to Premiere before, notice that this has changed. The way I'm actually linking clips has changed. So for a start I'm getting a dialog box which is showing me the thing I'm trying to link up. It's telling me where it used to be and other useful information about it. I've got some options down here about how it's going to match up the clips if it finds something. And I've also got this thing here, use media browser to locate files. Now if I don't have that ticked, he brings up the usual file dialog box. But if I do have that ticked, it launches into media browser. So it's a different way of finding clips. And this has got the great ability to search for them. So I know roughly where this thing is supposed to be. I'll just say click on the AVCHD folder and say search and off it'll go and find the clip. Here we are, found the right one. Got this nice little box here to just only show exact name matches. So just trims down whatever the list is to just show me the clips that match the name, although I can click on that and show all of them. But the major thing is it will search for stuff. You just put it somewhere and it searches for clips and finds matches. Then you just click on it and say OK and it relinks up the clips. It's relinked clip 43 because that's the one that I chose. Let's select these two clips, which are two other different clips. Choose link media. Now I've got those two. It says it knows where they were. Well, let's locate, search. Oh, found it. Okay, bang, relinks them. The whole relinking of clips has got considerably better with Premiere Pro CC. Not only does it know where they used to be, it's much better at finding them, it's much cleverer at once you've found one, it'll then link up other ones which are nearby. So it's got a huge amount of improvement. That one is actually really worth having. Because if you've ever moved stuff around and then you've had to relink clips on a very large project, you'll know what a pain in the neck it is, but well, it's a lot easier to do with Premiere Pro CC. Another thing you might notice compared to old versions of Premiere is we've got a bunch of buttons up here. So there's this new one for how you nest sequences. There's a snap icon, there's the tool which lets you get to different presets and so on, and there's the add marker button. But what isn't there is the add encore chapter marker button. I can still do it, I can just click on this when it puts in markers, double click on it, and it brings up the marker dialog box and I can still tick chapter marker and then put in a name. So now I've got an encore chapter marker. It's just there isn't an add encore chapter marker button. Actually, the easiest way to add an encore chapter marker is to set a keyboard shortcut for it. So if I go into edit and then keyboard shortcuts and search for chapter, as it says add chapter marker, it used to be saying add encore chapter marker in CS6. We're going to add a chapter marker. I'm just going to assign the M button to it. it. Stops it doing what it used to do, but I've now assigned M to it. And now I can go through, click on M, and it goes straight to this and put some words in there and it's already marked as a chapter marker. So still easy to do, you just gotta to remember to set a keyboard shortcut for it. But there isn't an add on called chapter marker up here. That does lead on to another change with Premiere Pro CC and Encore. There is not an Encore CC. The net upshot of that is that you can no longer select the timeline and go file and then dynamic link and then send to Encore. You'll notice it's actually greyed out on this system. I can't dynamic link a Premiere Pro CC timeline with Encore CS6. You only get dynamic link if you get CS6 Premiere and CS6 Encore, so it's gone. Everything that we're hearing about Encore is that they're not going to develop it anymore. They think it's gone far enough. They're gonna carry on supplying Encore CS6, but there won't be a Encore CC or anything later. Get a file off to Encore, you've gotta go File, Export, Media, and then choose some format from here. The format you use is kind of dependent on all sorts of things. Obviously, if you're going off to Blu-ray, then it's probably an H.264 Blu-ray. If you're going off to DVD, then it's an MPEG-2 DVD, and then you choose a preset, and then you come down here and customize bit rates and so on, and you also change how you're doing the sound. Nothing's really changed about these settings. They have actually souped up the encoder a bit, so it's a bit better, but mainly it's the same as it was before. On the sound, for example, you can do Dolby Digital Stereo, but if you want to do surround sound, you've got to use the Surcode plugin, and if you use the Surcode plugin, you've actually got to pay extra to get the ability to make a surround sound for a DVD. One little change that you do have in this export dialog box is down here import into project. Something that Premiere used to do up until around about CS4, 
when you exported something it would come back in the project. They've added a little tick box so now you can do the same thing with Premiere CC if you want to. Don't tick it, doesn't load it back into the project, tick it and it'll load it into the project after it's finished. Again there are other small changes to do with timelines. The silly little things like this button here will select all the clips on a track. Now with CS6 if you clicked on that it would select everything on one track. If you held down on the shift key it would select everything on every track. They've changed it so if you now select that tool and click it selects everything on every track from that point onwards. If you hold down on shift it's only the stuff on the particular track that you're clicking on. That's in response to user requests. Basically people said, I'm forever trying to select everything on every track. Why doesn't that do that as a default? Well, now they've changed it.